everyone live on a midday saturday exciting i have had a riveting morning of hockey cleaning fish tanks scrubbing marker out of a couch purging from a closet Helping Harbor draw every Pokemon character known to man and cut them out and make his own Pokeball. All while potty training a three-year-old. If you would like to come over and hang out, you're more than welcome. It has been riveting. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to wait for Carrie and Adrian to join us. We're going to do... Oh! Look at that. Hi. Oh. Can you hear me? Yep. I'm going to just swipe out and come back. I know exactly how to fix it. Okay. okay. Perfect. Good. Hello, my friend. How are you? Good. I don't get why Adrian can't just join right in like you can. I came from my personal page. You invited my personal page, so which is great. You must, um, I can't invite your business. I don't, you must not follow me, oh. which sounds strange. I'm sure you do, but you must not. So check that because oh, you can she invite businesses who follow you. Okay. I'll double check that. I mean, it would be shocking that I don't, but who knows, right? But you also could have been unliked. I mean, it could have. What were you I've heard that. just saying about businesses? You can only invite pages to join your page that follow you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I knew okay. this. Like, I I was, it was funny. I was talking to Meredith Masonry a while back and she's like, she told me she woke up one morning and she had lost like a hundred thousand followers. Like it wasn't like seven. It was like, a, it had moved her from, don't quote me on this, but it had moved her from like 3 million to 2 million or something followers. And she like was like looking at it and like all of a sudden she didn't follow her own page. Her mom didn't follow her. She's like, it's not possible. I know. It's, I, they've all been like, it's been, something's messed with it. It's so inconsistent. Can I just share very quickly that when I announce in my household, and I only have two kids living here, two teenagers, I'm going to do a really quick live. We have to take a shower. We start the washer. We're going to hang pictures. We're going to... Jamie vacuums. Do all. Well. Oh, thanks. No, yeah. Why does that... taking the shower bother you, though? Well, it doesn't bother me, but he's, it's right up here, and I'm like, I don't know if you can hear the oh. water. I have... No, no. Two kids, Sawyer and a buddy, playing Fortnite right now. They have computers set up and chairs and blankets and snacks, and they're like being like, "Kill him, kill him!" I, I just don't worry about it. I got Fox News in here on DefCon Eight. Oh, <laughs> and you went my angry, <laughs> angry people. That's why I'm outside. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh boy, my father's on his way to visit. His by. Did you say biannual when it's twice a year? I think so. His biannual uh -huh. visit to me. What's he coming? Is he bringing the stepson and the stepmother? Yeah. Um, he brings, I, you know, it's funny because I've had so many steps that I don't refer to them as step parents anymore. She's my father's wife. She's nice. It's not that, uh -huh. but yep. she's his third wife. If I just think I'm over stepmother, I'm 50. I'm not going to refer to her anyways as stepmother. I had stepfathers. I had stepmothers. I've had two stepmothers. <laughs> Anyway, as you guys know, it's so interesting because uh, she has a son in his 50s who is, um, has autism. We are not blood related. Oh, it's, so, it's so kind of crazy. And when I describe him, Josh, he's probably, he's not coming by the way today. He's the closest I've ever seen to a Rain Man profile. Oh. So highly, high, like highly intelligent in like certain areas? Highly intelligent, like reading math books. Like if he came here, you would just, Joe would dig up an old math book and that would keep him busy all afternoon. Oh. But also highly anxious. Um, a lot like Jack in that they don't have like true joy. Like they chew on themselves metaphorically all day long. Like yeah. we're worried about everything and he worries a lot about food and he worries about the weather. And last time they came, they got stuck in traffic for two hours. Ew. And so part of me is like, this is an interesting question. It's, it's off topic from today, so I don't want to derail us. But he's in a group home. And there may be another name for it, but I think that's what they refer to it as. He's very happy there. Yeah. He, oh, good. he travels. They, have, they go to restaurants. So to me, I'm like, well, it, it does dovetail with today's conversation. Why pluck him out of that to drive four hours to New Hampshire 
they get stuck on the road. By the time he got here, he was so elevated. We have a dog. He he really dislikes dogs. It's just sort of, I, I was thinking like, he's so happy where he is. Why cause him all this stress? But that huh. really does kind of factor into what you were texting us about earlier, Kate. Yeah. Are they bringing him today? No, they're not. I mean, I don't think so. I wasn't notified. Usually they let me know because he really likes food, which I love. And so I would have made sure to get um, his foods. Yeah. The foods he really is in, enjoys. Same with Cooper. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting. So, you know, I'm pretty open that I'm not really close with my father. Um, they're a little hard on him and it's hard for my kids to watch. They don't like it. Like last time he came, I forgot to put the dog away, my fault. And I immediately, we put the dog upstairs, no big deal. And they were like, you're fine, Josh, you're fine. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And my kids were like, it's okay. The dog can be upstairs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I wonder if like after a while you just get, I don't know, kind of um, inured to the like, to their needs, I don't know. Odd. I would think it'd be the opposite. Yeah. It would be like, correct. Like every dog, or we can't go because they have a dog, or like. Right. Can I say something about um, a group home? Just, and I, I, we have a really interesting topic today that I, I want your feedback on hugely. But so yesterday I spoke at a conference, and it was a conference for parents, but of course there were like 10 parents there because parents never know <laughs> what happens in our world, in the autism world. But there were lots of like, social workers, waiver people, like um, case workers, financial aid workers, all the people that like work in gov the government county side for a lot of adults, a lot of adults, mm. not so much kids, I don't think. But this woman came up to me and we talked for a half an hour and she has a 45 year old son with severe autism. Mm. And she was telling me that she, I mean, she, she, when you think of someone with PTSD, it was this lovely woman. She was telling me that her son has been kicked out of three group homes. And so he's in his forties now. So they went down the group home route when he was in his twenties. And then um, Carver out, oh, I'm so annoyed. Where is my house? And, um, then she, then it didn't work. But here's the question I have. He got elevated and hit a staff member mm -hmm. at, the, at the first group home. Now, for anyone that has a child with significant behaviors, you know that hitting is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it's right. It's terrible. It's awful. All the parts. But so they called the police on him and took him in after he mm -hmm. hit the person there. And the mom couldn't get him out. He had to stay um, jail all weekend. Uh, so I kept saying, I kept like pushing and I was like, but is it severe autism? Cause I'm like, no one in their right mind could put Cooper in jail. Right. Like you never, it would be like a hospital. Like, and she's like, no, it's severe autism. And they would not, she's like, I camped out in the parking lot. I was there for two days to get him out Monday morning. Is that possible? Is that yeah. my greatest fear? It is my greatest, Cooper would uh, die. Die. Same. Where where are they from, Kate? Rural, rural Minnesota. Oh. Rural. So maybe there, there's no training. I, I I'm I don't know. Maybe there's no training. Like that is one of as you know, also my biggest fears. But Jack's verbal and could kind of navigate that a little bit. But oh, that's heartbreaking. I mean, and she, she could like. And this has been like 25 years, and I'm telling you. She, so I guess it happened. She said it happened. He was 24. He's in his 40s now. She could hardly talk about oh, it. Okay. She's like, oh. I couldn't save him. <sighs> and I guess I just, I didn't, I really naively didn't know. Like if Cooper, also, here's one other part about that. If Cooper, and it hasn't happened in a long time, hits a person at school, he doesn't get suspended because he has a behavior plan and IEP, but I know where they do get suspended. Yeah. Is that a thing? I didn't know that. It's so funny you say that because somebody messaged me on Instagram and it absolutely shattered my heart. She said, my 12 year old said something about shooting a gun. They suspended him for nine days and they have a hearing coming up. And this mom, I actually tear up thinking about it because she's so lost and heartbroken. And no one and and there's so much no one. Uh, oh. Jack was suspended in um, fifth grade, fifth, sixth grade. I'm sorry, sixth grade. He was suspended for three days. 
um, for lashing out and hitting. And, you know, I see both sides. Like kids shouldn't hit in school. Teachers should feel safe. The students shouldn't have to clear classrooms, you know, but um, as a mom, it was one of the most shameful parts of our journey. My son is suspended. And we've and talked about this, that it's so hard to disengage your own moral compass with their behaviors. Like I was like, what kind of family are we? I never thought my kids would get suspended from school for behavior. But once I kind of like detached myself morally, it's like, here's a kid who needs something. I don't, we didn't know what at the time, but that helped me. So if anybody's like feeling that shame, autism and behaviors are not a reflection of you at all. Well, I would also say from a educator standpoint, it's downright illegal to, to be suspended for a disability. So there's that. Well, that, that that's what I, like, I, yeah. and what I thought is like, Cooper. I mean, idea is very clear. It, it, I, I've never, I mean, I was in graduate school for seven years after college. And I mean, I took several law classes and there was never a class where they talked about, I, I don't, it's, it's not legal. It's happening all the time, though. Like, I'm hearing about this. Like, well, I think it happens. Like every but I mean, it's it could be like the time. So my school system, like, can you come back to school and get Amos? Well, that's illegal. Like, you'd never, ever have to go pick up your child oh, from school. They no. have. Yes, exactly. But legally, they are not allowed to do that. So if a school system, and clearly you want to go, right? Like, you don't want to leave the school in a lurch, right. but you can file an OCR complaint, which is um, the Office of Civil Rights, because it is a right of a person with a disability to have access to education, and nothing will impede that. Um, except the only thing, the only thing, which is generally, it's not federal law, but I think every state has mirrors federal law, is that if you take a weapon to school, a gun, you are then suspended for 365 days but what that would mean is that you would get education in your house um but if mm. your iep said you're supposed to have access to your peers i think you could still argue that it, it, that would be, be tricky i guess but generally it you have you it shouldn't happen so when we left sixth grade and went to a different school they were calling us to get him every day and that mm. is a whole other lie that i would tell you that I mean, when I'm telling you it shattered Jamie and I to walk in that school and they're like waiting with walkie talkies, like Swenson's are here, move. Like, yep. Yep. And, right. Um, what I think is so interesting is, oh, my mind just went blank. Oh, I have a friend who they were calling her to pick up her daughter every day and she went because you don't want your kids stressed. You don't want them to search. But she learned something interesting that they stop tracking data the second you say you're coming to get them at that mm. so like let's just say it took her 45 minutes and but she's like we need to know what's happening in those 45 minutes like we need to know so she one day said i'm not coming mm. you're gonna have her and i will be there and it like solved a lot of the problems because she this child knew that once something got to a certain point mom was coming uh, to get her uh, well yeah. so, so when i not to monopolize so the last time i got called was last year it was things were bad and i said to them i can come i, I will come but i'm going to tell you if i come one time this is going to exacerbate the behavior and this is this is a very very cheap band-aid in a pool like this is not the problem we have got to get to what is the problem i agree and the, yeah and the problem was there was just a whole mess of placement and where he was and right. Teach, I mean, just a lot of problems. Um, so I think all the more reason for parents to say, yeah, you know, no, I, we, we got to come up with another I plan because I know that this is my legal right for him or her to be here. So what else can we do later? Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean you can't help that second. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. oh, we have sometime we should have like a, just a live on this. that. Is is a big topic because I think it's a fine line between disability and behaviors. I wouldn't have wanted to leave Jack there because it's not fair. It's not a learning environment for students and teachers to have this kid out of his mind. 
And I would say his behaviors at that point were not choice. So it wasn't like, I know if I bite this teacher in the arm, mom's coming to get me. Like he was so out of his mind during those yep. situations. We call it the so like Cooper's eyes would like glaze over uh, when he have his, uh -huh. and I knew nothing was going in he wasn't in, he wouldn't even i swear to you remember what happened during the meltdown yep yeah so Carrie, Jack, was it was it um like with amos it was there were all these things contributing to the problem so once we handled those he was reacting to the environment yep. yeah well ours resulted in an out of district placement for starting for seventh grade and that really did solve a lot of the problems he just needed a smaller a space different environment to cocoon and he wasn't learning he wasn't taking in any information during the day he was so elevated the second he got there then we were in this cycle of shame he would come home at night and be ashamed and i can't go back there they saw me cry oh. Oh. and this really is a topic for another time because I talk all the time that you can't punish a kid at four o'clock in the afternoon for what he did at lunchtime. And we had to really break that cycle and our home became like the safe space. Like we didn't rehash it. We didn't, we did originally, we took things away. We, you know, disciplined and how could you? And we had to really soften all of that. I so I talked to parents. Wonder, a lot. I wonder if Jack being just more able, I have never, I've never even thought to like, discipline Amos for mm -hmm. a meltdown. Ever. No, I will not discipline for autism. I mean, it I doesn't even occur to me. I'll, I'll die on. I will not discipline him for having something related yeah. to autism. Yeah. He, Cooper can be a little SHIT. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell the difference. I, yeah. Right. I think it's twofold. I think we had, one, you know, they're all about a year apart. So I was like, well, your older brother would never do this. And you're, and Adrian, it's exactly that his profile just demonstrated like he was capable in so many situations right. so it's like what you know we were we were just so new to it even at sixth grade because he's you know he's 20 now like there are very few trailblazers ahead of us saying like all right just breathe this is puberty this is hormones don't take away scooby-doo you know do all of that right so definitely right. A learning curve for us yeah let me tell you one other oh. the topic so I, I was at uh winnie's preschool halloween parade on thursday Mm. And with my older son now, we're getting to the point where people are starting to talk about high school. And so Sawyer is in a parochial school, a Catholic school, and it ends at eighth grade. So there's two routes that they take. Typically, the eighth graders either go public school or they go to these private parochial schools that are very expensive. And I mm. that's fair to say they're, they're, it's, a, it's a life choice, right? Mm -hmm. And so... This is coming up a lot now. Where are you sending Sawyer? I'm, I swear we get asked this every day. And we're like, we honestly don't know. We haven't made the decision yet. And then it, then every time the conversation morphs to public school and it always gets to this topic of the furries. Have you heard about this? Kind of, but fill me in. But so I'll tell you, that's not the point of my thing. I'll tell you a little bit about it. So um, I have heard this firsthand. I have never seen it that in... Minnesota public schools, you can be a cat, and in the school, there's an actual litter there's, box room. That is an absolute, absolute lie. I, there is no from teachers. You have heard it from people who tell you they've seen it, teachers. but there has never been documented one photo. So I would really be careful. Okay. I do not think it's true. I think it's true because I've heard it from teachers, but that's not the point. So then this mom was saying to me, and guess what they have at the elementary school? And I go, what? And she's like, a green room. And so I was like, tell me more. And she's green. like, it's a room that's full of mats and it's all padded and the kids can go in there and when they're in there, they can do whatever they want. They can hit themselves, they can yell. And she's telling me this, like, this is like this new thing. And so then I go, is, is this like, the, the, the timeout rooms that they used to put kids with disabilities in like 20 years ago. My school had one. My mom worked in the school. There was a padded room. Yeah. I was in it thought, numerous times. And she's like, yes. And these kids are just going in there and they're having these meltdowns and then they can't be getting in trouble for it. They can do whatever they want in the green room. I'm like, didn't they get rid of all those? No. I they like, got rid of them. And now they're coming no, back. No, no. Uh-uh. Wow. wow. No, those are, those are alive and well. The real problem is you can't be in a, there's federal law regarding restraint and seclusion spaces. So there always has to be an adult with you. There's like 10 kind of federal guidelines that go along with that. And I, I think 
close the door. Was that one of them? Well, you, you, as long as there is an adult with you, I think you can, I don't remember that being a rule. Mm. The real problem is that schools used to like take a broom closet and turn it into a seclusion room. And that is illegal. I mean, that, that happens to this day. Mm. It's not supposed to, but it, it does happen. Uh, amazing. Tia over at Trev's Trades has a story about her son. A fellow parent told her that her son, and she shares this, was being put in a broom closet in California. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, it like yeah. rocked oh. me. It like, and, and he had. Yeah, and the kids, I think it happens to, you wouldn't necessarily know because they can't yeah. tell. You know, so right. that's the, it's a good, it's always good to go to a school and look at all the spaces. I mean, I've looked in closet, like, well, what's this room? What's in here? <laughs> Cooper's classroom has a um, sensory room and it's it's one of his favorite spaces. It has like a trampoline and a swing and like lots of blankets and that sort of thing. And he loves right. it. Heads yeah, that's nice. He would choose to go in there. What I never, what always freaked me out about those seclusion rooms, I mean, amongst many things, was that it, it was dark. Like if you put Cooper in a dark room, like he yeah. would be so scared. Mm. I, I just can't imagine. Yeah. Huh. So my topic for today that and we this I'm I'm on Instagram. I was at hockey and at hockey this morning at I was there at 8 a.m. and I'm just sitting on in, you know in a rink for an hour, and I see this post and it really caught me off guard. So it was like a carousel. So it was like the photos where it's just it's like you know like eight photos and there's text on each one oh. and you, it's like the new. Okay. Adrian, you asked me what a carousel was. Oh. That's what a carousel. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know and, that's what it was called. Yeah, okay. We'll have to, you check, because you sent that with that Instagram email. Yeah. It's a carousel, but you change the text per photo? Yep. I, have no I don't have So to. it's like writing your story on the photographs, yep. right? Who has time to make eight different oh. slides? Oh, golly, oh. Moses. That's a great. But I love them, and I'm very intrigued. By them, so I think they're a But I do person. like them. Yeah. So there was this post, and it was a beautiful post, and it was about trick-or-treating. And I was reading the, the text, and I was finding myself getting kind of uncomfortable, because it was like... And I'm, I'm going to seriously like paraphrase here, but it was like, you know, we don't force our kids to wear costumes, which is awesome. We don't force them to say trick or treat. Well, that's good. You know, we don't force them to stay out longer than they want to. That's good. And then like it kept going and it was like, and we feel no judgment about it. And we don't allow ourselves to feel badly about it. And we don't care what people think because we're raising these kids to be themselves. It was like getting more and more intense. And it made me think of Adrian and Carrie when we were at V. Oh, I know what you're about yep. to say. Do you, Carrie? This mm -hmm. mom we had a three-year-old. Oh, yeah. New mom. Three, Let's yeah, be honest. Three-year-old and a one-year-old. New. Told this story about how they weren't accepted at a family Christmas or it didn't work out. And she was just, like, tough. And she was like, but we're not going back. We're not going. We don't need We family. will never. She used the word never, which is a very dangerous, dangerous word we, to use. And holiday the mother of many children fantastic and they will be great and adrian and i looked at each other and we're like well that's not gonna work forever what okay so i'll keep going so and i was trying to with such piousness too like this is the only way yes so right I, to... I think i was off eating when you got <laughs> you what i think i was off eating my lunch when she was oh. talking <laughs> So I was like trying to like think of this. I'm like, so it's not toxic positivity. So toxic positivity is when like autism is a superpower. It's beautiful. It's a gift, all that. That's toxic positivity. But there's something that these new moms with these new big diagnoses, they don't know if their kids are going to talk. They don't know what the future looks like. There's puberty looming. There's all these things. But suddenly they're like, like we don't need anyone. We're not going to change our kid. It's going to be exactly how we want it. And the rest of the world can just shove it. And what's so weird to me about that is great. Okay, great. You don't need anybody. But what they're leaving out of the conversation is, is it sad? <laughs> and I'm just going to say it. So I am so comfortable with, with Cooper not trick-or-treating. Cooper's 13. He didn't put a costume on. He didn't leave the house. He didn't hand out candy. He sat on the couch and had just enjoyed his life. And there was still 13 years in where I felt 60 seconds of like, gosh, I wish he'd come out with us. Gosh, uh -huh. 
nice. This is kind of sad, you know? And I, what makes me nervous is that these parents of these newly diagnosed kids are going to see this, this, these influencers saying autism is a gift. Everyone, you don't need anybody in the world and it's not sad. It's beautiful. Like, are you guys seeing this trend? Cause it's freaking me out. That trend and the, and the, and I don't have an opinion on this. It's something I'm observing adults getting diagnosed with autism because Jack's autism would not have been masked for that long or like, self-diagnosing. I do have an opinion on that. Yeah. I'm out. Uh, it's slippery. I think two you things. You can't diagnose yourself with autism unless you're a clinical psychologist. I mean, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when I first met you, Kate, you were really, I think in that very insular space, you weren't leaving. You couldn't, you guys were really isolated. I don't think you were happy in that. Like, could um, you imagine me saying like, 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 for example, there's a family camping trip that Jamie's family has been going on for 40 years, oh, yeah. 40 years. We can't go. We not make it work. We've tried. It does not work. And we're sad every, we right. see lawyer. We've tried everything. Do we get a hotel? Do we, right. we've tried everything. You guys, we cannot make this work. And it is sad. Now, can you imagine me saying like, but what world would I be like, lucky us. We don't get, we get to miss out. But you know, I, no, I think you also, though, and Carrie is why it's so nice to have Carrie. Like, she's been through all these stages, granted with a different person, but still, you've seen things happen that you, I don't think any of us have ever said never. This is, ne well, maybe some things, like, that Amos might never get married. But, but for the most part, like, if I say we didn't take Amos on a trip, I'm not saying that we won't ever, or you're not saying that you might never take Cooper on the camping trip or that he might be able to do it someday. I think the problem is your people are really limiting themselves by saying, we can't do that. We're not going to do that. And that's it. Because it's like, well, last year we did go to Thanksgiving lunch for one hour and it was good, you know, and I, I don't want people to miss opportunities. Yeah by right. being righteous right that, because I think it would be right carrie i think that's the right word when i thought about this like because you texted us early so i thought about it off and on that like i wish i could do a social experiment where it's like jack who we didn't push into uncomfortable situations versus the jack that we did sort of say okay no you cannot take all of the ornaments off of aunt amory's christmas tree that's not how we behave yeah you know or the cafeteria talking that you mentioned. Right. You know, he was allowed to have a microphone in the cafeteria in, in um, elementary school to grandly announce when everybody was allowed to leave the tables. And we kind of had to, like, close that down. You know, um, and you hit the nail on the head, Adrian, with Thanksgiving. It doesn't have to be the full day. You might not last the full day. And one thing that was always good for Joe and I is we took separate cars. Oh. And so we'll back, usually. The more cars, the better. <laughs> Yeah. And it but, feels like less pressure too. Right. I can leave if I need but, to. Yeah. But to think that an autistic child is perfect and doesn't need any, like, like Cooper hears no just as much as his siblings. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I guess what I think is so bizarre is like, you're to, to this mom that has this three-year-old that's never gonna do family Christmas. Family Christmas should be your goal. Practice right. skills yeah. to get, go for 10 minutes. Right. Do different things to make it work. Because I, I had a parent tell me this one time and her son was like 50 in Lake Cooper. And she goes, you are going to leave this earth one day and he is going to have to live with other people. And he needs to know how to live in this world and it is so true we don't want to like we don't want to think that but like i can't let cooper run wild because he's autistic i can't or use it right use we talked last week i love to hibernate cooper and i would be so dangerous together because mm. i'd be like sure get a hundred blankets and some popcorn and we'll just camp out for the weekend it's that age-old question do we smooth down their edges for the world yeah, I was and, just thinking, and how, when do you push? And when do you, and when do you, yep. like we're down and we're at my parents' house in Florida, clearly. And it's great. He and I just, he's been in the pool about an hour. I was like, I'm going to stay in the pool, do a video. But he had water in his ears. Well, he hates eardrops, like more than a self-flushing toilet. 
but mm -hmm. he had what and I said I'm gonna get go. mom goes I'll go and I said okay anus we're gonna do these eardrops and they're not gonna hurt and I really there was a part of me that was like forget it I'm not I'm not gonna try the eardrops and I put them in my ear and then I did them in his ear and he was fine and it's like that was a huge success yeah. like now I know we can do the eardrops so I don't I think it's it's real easy to protect ourselves and yeah flew down here with the dog and Amos by myself and it I will say it was hard and exhausting but we've done it like I know we can do it it wasn't perfect but I think you have to kind of just gauge for yourself when you want to push and when you need a break yeah. you know I'm not at the beach right now I'm not at the zoo I'm not at the playground he's in there watching TV and I'm happy as a clam out here you know it's that balance I guess mm -hmm. and Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and I do want to say, there were a lot of years where I didn't push. So I, I will say that, like, in our hardest years, like, our autism journey has really felt like a, like, a, there was a climax at age eight. That was our hardest point. That's when we started meds and really started helping him. But like, we, we couldn't do things at that age. Couldn't. We heard that at, like, five or six. Like, we literally could not. If you left the house, it was terrible. Yeah. Like, it was bad in the house. It was just bad. It was just bad. And so I think if, if you're a parent, you're, if you're watching and you're like, you know, hating us because we're like, you got to push, you got to do, um, you have time. Um, and yeah. it, maybe not right now, but like, like if you would have told me we could go to the grocery store and push the shopping cart, I would have probably punched you in the face. Like there's no way. And like now, like he can put the cart. And, and I want to say that, you know, my husband's the youngest of six, huge Italian family. If we had sort of hunkered down and said, oh, no, that's too big for us. He'll never be successful. It would have robbed him of so many beautiful relationships. Oh, yeah. And this, you think of how sad Sawyer would be or your other kids if they didn't get to go. Yeah. I mean, you guys yeah. have seen my this talk I do. And I, and I talk about Jack's relationship with his grandmother who passed away. He was intensely connected to her. And what I want to say is neuro, neuroscience tells us we become attached to an outcome. And then we just scan for evidence, right? So if you say, we can't go to my parents. They'll be mean. They don't get us. They will reject him. And they don't understand. Then you get there and you just look for clues to support that. And that was a game changer for me to learn because I hear a lot, well, my family wants nothing to do with us. Maybe they want nothing to do with it on your terms. You have to let them build their own relationships with people outside of your nuclear family. Like my in-laws are older. They didn't understand. They never heard the word autism before Jack. They didn't understand what language delay was and they wanted to put his jacket on and he didn't want to put his jacket on. I mean, we have years of that but they found this really gentle, beautiful space together. And you have to take yourself out of it sometimes. Like Adrian, I would imagine Amos connects very differently with your parents than your other kids do. Yes, and I would say it's, particularly with my dad, it's hard, harder because there would be like a throwing of a remote. And then I remember him being, I think I've told y'all this, like he did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I know that. It's like my mind can't, it's almost like this is all pretend, you know, for years. But I think, and not having somebody say, hey, how are you? I miss you. Like, yeah, d doesn't even acknowledge you. That yes. is, it's, take, it's been a lot harder, you know? The other I love Terry. I just imagine Jack in the middle of your act and how, how cool that was because y'all probably just turned heads no oh. matter what because you had so many small people that i do think you probably that was probably kind of nice i mean you know um anyway that was yeah. nice about it. it was a lot of it is still to this day a lot of fun i'm gonna try to have one of the cousins there's a girl cousin who's almost 30 we call it cousin jenny on one of my sub stacks just to talk about what it was like to be a cousin and she's very like she sends jack cookies now and very very Lovely. And this is the network, by the way. Yeah, I have five kids. So we have a nice network for when I'm no longer. But the cousin network is a, just another layer for us. So I became intentional about kind of growing that. And by the way, was he a total SHIT? Yeah, one time we were at my in-laws and my mother-in-law loved to cook and she made a plate of scrambled eggs for one cousin, cousin Chrissy. He leaned over and spit in them. Mm. Just out of nowhere. 
just unprompted, just like. Did he want them? You know, I think he was just, I, I could not tell you. He had some impulsive behaviors way back when. And my mother-in-law just made a new plate of eggs and they threw away the other plate. And like, that was that, so. We've always had, so we have very, both sets of grandparents are great. So I want to start by saying that, like always loved Cooper for who he is. And so we've been very blessed with that. But the two things that would really set the grandparents off, you know, in the beginning, because you kind of reminded me of this, is like a Thanksgiving dinner when he wouldn't eat the Thanksgiving food or would even come to the table. Like the, I'm talking about the first couple of years. So like this is all since changed because Cooper's Cooper. And then the other one that like I could tell would just like really confuse them in the beginning is when he didn't really have a Christmas list. And then like he didn't get excited about presents and he didn't say thank you or it didn't matter to him. For what maybe maybe all grandparents are like this. I don't know. But like I picked out this present for you. Yeah. You know it should be so you know like in most kids are but like we had many christmases where cooper didn't even open up the gifts right and like, oh I, yeah not even yeah, one that would be like make them sad you know and i it's, think it's because they're desperate for a connection need i noticed with my mom so i'll now be like he wants this national geographic book he doesn't have it and she's excited to like have something that he's gonna air like but it's usually nothing she would think of herself yeah right for us yes. you know it was the hug give grandma a hug give grandma a kiss. and that was more directed by my husband he didn't like that jack didn't was an affectionate but once he backed off jack became affectionate on his own oh that's good and, oh yeah jack, i talk all the time he's never once hugged me never once. so so when you leave him do you hug him and he just doesn't really hug you back yeah, now he might do the one arm. By the way, I barely, I don't even come up to his shoulder anymore. So it's super awkward. Like I'm hugging like his torso uh -huh. and he'll hug Joe all day long, but he just gives me a one arm. And uh -huh. one time, I laugh all the time about this. I was a couple of years ago. I was very upset about something one morning and crying. I'm not a big crier, but I was very upset. And he said to me, you look like you could use a hug. And I said, yeah, I could. And he turned around and walked away. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Just know exactly what you expect. <laughs> like how I would picture Jack. Like oh exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you laugh? Oh, oh! I. You know what? It really broke my like my. I'll go um, get someone for you. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can hire someone to touch yeah. you. Okay, to help my, you. My other kids are very affectionate. So, Cooper has just started. Um, like Cooper's 13. So there, in a lot of ways I talked to him like a 13 year old. And so like, if he, yeah. I'm like, I'm mad at you. I'm like, I'm frustrated. I can't believe you did that. And he'll, this is what he does. He gets, he puts his forehead on mine and he smiles and he comes in and he just like rubs out my forehead. It's like, how do you stay mad at someone that's like uh -huh. push ball like that? Well, I know we talk all the time. Is Amos affectionate, Adrian? Yes. Motion when I see him. He so. is to me and mainly to me okay yeah to me he's very cuddly but he um and he likes physical touching like if we'll be here thanksgiving and the teenagers throw him in the pool and he just that loves that so they're not like cuddling but they are physical yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he is love when, and my husband's a big guy he when jack was younger joe would lay on him oh. and jack love that, that input Cooper still loves that. He, yeah, he, yeah, he loves to like, even Jamie will still throw him in the pool and like throw him around. And like, like Jamie will throw the toddlers and then Cooper will get in line. And like, <laughs> that's Amos has bulked up some. And I was like thinking today, like, that's going to be hard. So he was really funny. His new thing is that he sees a word and he says, what do the letters stand for? So like the word help. When I was like, well, it doesn't, stand for anything it's help and so then he'll make up a thing so like he said it's high elevation latitude plasma I me mean, just oh, comes up with, like is that an acronym he, yes he thinks it's thank you and an acronym so today he got into what is delta and he did delta and i said well i'll tell you what you tell me what does amos stand for and i was like this is gonna be lovely like he's gonna come up with this great thing and he said stop asking me dumb questions. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect.
perfect. Is, for, he is there goes so my cool. moment of clarity. Yeah. He's incredibly smart. I don't know if he's, if it's that useful. I mean, <laughs> it can't hurt. It can't hurt. I mean, Jack, we were texting, this is a couple weeks ago, back and forth. And he said, what were my biggest pre, oh, how did he say it? preoccupations, obsessions, obsessions. And I said, well, you know, he used to be obsessed with this one yellow radio to the point where we say, okay, Jack, from five to 5.30 every afternoon, we call it Jack's time, you can talk about that radio. Oh. And then after- well, that, I remember, I've tried this with Amos, it does not doesn't work. It doesn't work. We well, call I it- a little bit, like you can't ask, we're not gonna talk about how many more sleeps. Oh. Three more times and then I'm done. And that has helped a little bit. We call it, and my other kids thought it was so disgusting, but the pot, your brain has a pocket and you put that in the pocket in your brain and then we don't take it out till five o'clock. But so he's texting me now, he's 20, right? What were my obsessions? I said, remember the yellow radio? And he said, oh, I do. And then he named a couple others. He was obsessed with hand soap and all of this. And he said, well, they're all the same anyway. And I thought same thing, and like, here's this big prophetic, like, you know, conclusion, yeah, he's gonna yeah. reveal something. I said, what do you mean they're all the same? He said, radios, they all play music. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, oh funny. It's all funny, I get it, I get it. <laughs> I thought he was gonna be like, they run deep, yeah. I don't know why. Right. <laughs> they yeah. soothe yeah. my soul. Like, Stop no. asking me the <laughs> dumb questions. Exactly. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> Can you even buy a radio anymore? You can. They have them at TJ Maxx. I asked because well, so the we're we always the stars. So because we Cooper still uses the VCR, so we'll get that. True story. We'll buy them at Goodwill, Salvation mm -hmm. Army. Mm -hmm. Always okay. a tape in them. Ooh. <laughs> what kind we, of tape? Oh God! Anything. Anything. Um, we found some interesting things, but there's home movies. A tape in them. Um, yeah. So, a lot of you know. <laughs> my husband is ridiculous in his own right but when we were dating he went out and spent three hundred dollars my they're watching the ohio state game and bought a double vcr and i was oh. like wow that's you know a lot you make like i don't know twelve hundred fifty dollars a month or something and he right. said I, and i love to say this to him this is the only vcr i will ever need <laughs> And I'm like, where is that double VCR? What, what is a double? Do? Do, why do you need a double VCR? Well, because the double VCR, you could rent the videotape and then tape it, oh. record it, which was illegal. Oh. So you had oh, another copy. Yes, I remember that. And then you would have a whole, whole collection of pirated movies. We still he have also a had a pirated cable box that he bought from the cable guy in college for $200. And that cable box, I, we had it up to like 10 years ago. You could hook it up to any TV and you just, we got free movies. That's, and that's a mess. Incredible. Unscrambled. Yes, highly illegal. You know, in the beginning when it's like you could go to prison for five years yeah. just for that. <laughs> he, he could go. You should not reveal this out loud. I would like jail. So when a warrant out for him. I would get in such good shape. Was, yeah. Such a good, like I remember recording on a VCR. You what? I, like, uh, yeah, yeah. What do you I do? I remember like recording, like, and it was never good. It was always like tracking. Right? Or trying to record songs from the radio oh. to make a mixtape. And, the and you'd have to wait to try to catch it. And then the DJ would talk into the first few minutes. So then you would lose the first like few seconds, not minutes, but a few seconds of the song. I mean, Tiffany running just as fast as you can. I, just... I put in like a hundred hours to get in that song. I just tape. heard that song. <laughs> That's, you just heard it. I just heard it. Oh, you don't mean the first time. No, you mean again. No, no, no. Again. Okay. Like, no, like she I just love that. means it came back. Carrie and I are like the same age, the so we have the I'm same. Older. I'm the old lady here by like ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, what do you guys have on tap for the rest of the day? We have our visitors. Oh, I think they, they are they spend the night. They do, but in a hotel. Oh. So we're doing dinner with them it's chilly here it has been in the 70s all week in new hampshire because kate it snowed two, there I mean, two days so was halloween thursday uh -huh. yeah right was it thursday yeah. yeah yeah on tuesday it was 80 legit 80 78 80 and then it snowed we had to dig out every year the first snow we're digging out snow stuff like one glove oh, oh. i know that 
exactly. Cooper does not have a hat and blah. Uh, it, it, yes, so very cold. But now it's nice again. I would say it's like mid 50s. So Jamie's outside. He wants to do yard work, but we're all avoiding him. Yard work is one thing that I will throw me at the problem. Oh, no. So my yard house- work is something you should do if you enjoy it. Yeah. My dad never made us do yard work. And he would say to my uncle, like, I chose this house with this yard. The children did not. That's fair. And now he made us do a lot of other crap. But that was like, he was sort of felt, he enjoyed yard work. That was like what he enjoyed doing on the weekends. Like picking leaves. There is nothing worse. <laughs> not my, yeah, my I mother. Don't mind power. I like power washing. I don't mind painting. Not like there's cool. things I enjoy doing, but not that. I have never connected with growing a single thing. And my mother was very into like flowers and flower beds. She had a rhododendron tree that she so spoke much. to. <laughs> like she talked the plants is oh, really thing. So like we've moved quite a few times, but the house two ones two two houses before this one <laughs> had a beautiful like the whole thing was a garden in the back, like flowering mm. plants and, and vegetables and stuff and one of the worst fights we ever had he's like my husband was like and you let that garden go to hell and I'm like I don't care I work full time I'm you know running a half marathon I have three kids I don't care I'm writing a book whatever it was you know it was like this yeah. is not it you cannot force me to garden no well it's a pot for uh, I just killed when the my kids were little we lived in a house and it had a beautiful all these brick beds, like it had a mat, you know, the somebody, you're a master gardener, like you're, you get like this certification. So it had, so I just kept up what that man did, but the kids were little and played in the yard. So it was like an activity for me. They'd be playing and I would, I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. Arctic, but not now I'm over it. And I mowing. I, I'll tell you, I've always, and other wives, I've heard this too. I'm always jealous of Jamie when he like goes out and sits on a beautiful day and mows. And I'm like, I want to do that. Like I'm in the trenches taking grenades. Kids. I remember that. Joe always made sure all the kids know how to mow the lawn. And that was kind of their precursor. Cause we have a tractor to learning how to drive. Mm-hmm. That's a good drive. Idea. Yeah. I had a push mower at that house. Sawyer push mows now. We like, Oh yeah. really? And he refuses to pick up the dog poop and then J- him and Jamie like fight every time like gosh yeah do you need to pick up the dog poop before well, you know it there are different thought processes on that oh I was thinking that the other day wondering that ours is yeah yes. oh are you yeah uh, you're also not supposed to throw the dog poo in the water what water like that the, the sound in front of my house oh well it's evidently very very bad for it plus but that makes sense. I'm, have a big we have a thing a system like a big garbage can with a, and then we empty it every so often well like i just threw the i was throwing the poo in there and somebody went crazy so now i throw the poo on the side yard bushes <laughs> you're a sweet person <laughs> <laughs> special what do you guys up to kate <laughs> um the so warrior has us first first hockey game tonight as a b1 Ooh. peewee this big oh. are ranked this is so silly to say but i'm saying because i'm a proud mom they are ranked number two in the state wow that's how would they know it yet if they hadn't had a game because they've had like six scrimmages oh. and we didn't we didn't own those so they're undefeated so we have um and um lauren's gonna come over she's been in florida for a week and she's gonna come over and watch so it'd be she's gonna watch three of the kids oh. and we're gonna go to the game and have dinner for first oh. i'm so excited oh, i love so that hard. Harper doesn't go to the game. Well, that's funny that you asked that. Because he's hard on the cusp, I would think. He would love to go, but we might try and sneak out without him. But we brought the we brought the two little ones to a restaurant last night. Oh, that's, oh, that's good. And we don't go out to eat. You guys know we just don't we just yeah. don't bring the kids out a lot. And my in laws took Cooper. He wanted a sleepover. He was so mm-hmm. excited to go to there. Oh, that's nice. So we're he's in a Fortnite came out or something. I don't I don't even know. So he was with a and then we wanted to go to a restaurant and we went to this Mexican restaurant because they have, you know, chips. As soon as you get eating. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the kids did fine. They were good. They're six and three. But there was a table behind us and the woman was drinking a pink, a, a strawberry, like margarita or something. When he was like, I want that pink drink. 
she's like, could I have just a little, she was like right in there with them and it was so cute. Oh, so sweet. Did, did you get her a Shirley Temple? We didn't. Um, uh, she tried her first sip of orange Fanta and she was like, Phew. she was too spicy. Yeah, that's what she said. So my crowd was saying. Yeah. You know, it's interesting when you have, and Carrie, you probably didn't have this because you always had a pack of people. This is the first year I just have Amos at home. Mm. And I was, it's really, people are like, how are you? It's, I'm like, you know, it's really been nice. I've enjoyed, it's been so nice to focus on him without having to go to so much trouble. Like you had to get the sitter or the in-laws. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he and I can just do things where before I had last year, a 14 year old daughter who was like, let's go shopping for the day here. Let's. It was not yep. conducive to take him where now it's, he's finally getting a turn. Anyway, I I'm that, enjoying Because I have three in and Jack's in, a, in a, his own space. I can really, my, I see Rose and Henry, my two at home are really blossoming. Yeah. To yeah. feel, because Charlie was a huge personality. And I, I posted a picture of him at a Halloween party. Of course, like he just took that personality right along with him. You know, he's got somebody on his back. He's, you know, but he took up a lot of airspace around yeah. here and uh -huh. so it, so i'm I, i'm leaning into that plus my life now is so much e don't you find adrian like what's dinner like for you joe's like let's just eat out every night <laughs> well we don't have very many places to eat oh um you know we have like a pizza hut and a taco bell and mm. like maybe three like regular restaurants i think i um, all three of them when yeah, I was Yeah, yeah, you probably ate, yeah, Waterman's, Bistro, and Herring Bed. Yep. Um, we, Amos just eats whatever, you know, we, we, sometimes, I might cook once or twice a week, we eat leftovers, we pick mm -hmm. up a salad, we have a big lunch, we make breakfast, it's very, there's no, no one feels any pressure about any cooking. Right. Now, when the children come home, it's game on, I really try to have, they like to eat certain yeah. foods, you I'm, know, but, yeah. I'm still in the, so like, when, so, my, to uh, Sawyer and Harbor, when they get off the bus, I think off the bus at like 4, 4, 15, 4, 20, they are like starving. It's immediately like what's for dinner. Like they are just, and one of the problems that we're having, and I'm going to make a change, but normally we like to eat around five. That's so what happens is snack and then they're not hungry and yeah. I, they can't make it till five. So I think I'm just going to start having dinner at 4.30. I, that's what we do. <laughs> I'm seeing that trend online where these younger families, they have a big meal as soon as they get off and then something kind of lighter later. Yep. Amos eats dinner at 4.30 and then at night he has like a cinnamon raisin toast with peanut butter on it. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's a big problem it, because so Winnie and Harbor are not eating dinner because they're, they're so hungry. They're snacking. Then they're trying uh -huh. to make them a plate and then and someone's going to say keep the plate out and make them eat it again uh, yeah, i know but so, then at literally we're like okay Winnie, it's time for bed at like you know 7 45 and she's like i'm starving yeah. oh yeah, yeah. She's like, i'm so hungry you have to feed me that's and, amos's go-to too bedtime i need, i'm hungry and then like i have found and she's only three she's sneaking food in her room and like eating it not that we wouldn't let her eat but it's so funny <laughs> So yeah. we have not figured out the timing yet. I yeah, you need like cereal at seven or a snack yeah. at seven. I've I, been thinking about your meal into the schedule, so it's not a shock. Does that yeah, mean? yeah. Uh -huh. You know, you know what's happening tomorrow before we go, right? Where are you going? Oh, you're leaving to go back. They're home. not feeling for me. It, the time Tonight. change is tomorrow. Tonight. 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 Well, I mean, we wake up tomorrow to the time yes. change. So th when you have small children, the secret to the time change. Now, Carrie, you might not have done this, but I have always done this. Is we continue to live by the old time at night. So everybody now goes to bed a whole hour earlier. Ah. And it is fan freaking tastic. So Amos will be going to bed at eight, no longer at nine. We we did differently where we started to warm them up. We spent like two weeks before inching their bedtime so that so it went later. We must. You're talking about spring. Maybe this is the fallback. Yeah. I don't, I don't quite remember to be honest, but that's brilliant. My mother did it. She said we would be in bed at 530. <gasps> Except 
Except then they're up so early. Who cares? Who cares? You as like long as they're not bothering me. I don't care when they get up. See, I like. Yeah, yeah. I'm desperate for time at night, not we, with them. It's our biggest problem in our house right now. It, is that when he has started fighting bedtime again, uh, we have her in her bed and everything's ready at I would say eight, eight fifteen. There's some nights where she won't go to bed till eleven, and I am make, truly married. You crazy. I am. I'm truly Mary Poppins until about eight thirty, yeah. mm -hmm. and then I mean, and I, I'm just like, go to bed. Yeah. Like I can't, I, mm -hmm. I can't even. I just want to sit and like watch ten minutes of TV. That's all. I, I could cry. You need like two hours. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, my evenings are much much different now. I would almost love a little one up, <laughs> but that's because I don't have it. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't. My kids at eight o'clock I have been a human doing all day now I am a human being and that was code for don't talk to me about alpacas or yeah any yeah. you know yeah. like yeah it's normal I sneak downstairs like I have this like burnt into my memory because I think it's gonna be one of my favorite memories we where I sit in our, in our living room we can see the staircase like the so she'll peek around and she has this long blonde hair. I mean, it's like down to here and she only sleeps in princess gowns. And so she'll peek around and she'll go, boo. And she'll stick her head back. And I'm like, I hate you. I, hate I you. had that baby gate up? at the top of the stairs and they would we, like yell. I have it. Our house is weird. You remember? The, oh yeah. You couldn't do no. it. Well, I was, you know how everybody has their thing with the first three of them. I was like, if you wake me up in the morning, I promise you, you will be back in your room for like four hours. And at two and a half, Blair would go downstairs, get herself something to eat. Walk. I'd leave the TV on. She didn't dare wake me up. Yeah. Leave the TV on. That yes, for the next day. Uh, and I'd leave food out. She's such a, she's very prepared. This was Saturday mornings. I mean, I just wanted to sleep one freaking day a week. No. And not have somebody bug me. Do you follow Mel? Robbins, I love it. She's an influencer. She's very, Her very podcast has like, and this is so cheesy. That's like who scammed me. The pretend Mel Robbins changed my life. She has a pot, an episode on narcissism that like she does with that Romani or what is her name? I have her book. I love her, but anyhow, oh. it's so life changing. She's, I love her. Joe actually introduced me to Mel Robbins, and he's not like into podcasts. I thought it was podcast, a man. But man. I didn't know it was a woman. I love like 90% of her content, but she always has this thing about get up early. You're a loser. If you're not up by five, I have Ugh. to for the day. And I, I was like, for the first time in 21 years, I get up when my body tells me I can get up. That is life changing. The now and when does your I'm, body tell you? My body would say get up about 10, I think. Oh, um, I hear my kids and I might poke my head out, but I, I'm out of bed by eight. Oh, eight is still nice. Now, yeah, it's nice. And I'm like, I'm not going to feel guilty. I was up at 5.30 a.m. for decades with these jokers. And then CrossFit and, like, whatever else I was trying to get done before Ugh. my day started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll say Jamie's parents have always slept in. I, always. We don't, we know we would never call before 9. Mm. Oh, they just, they're, they are, and they, but they stay up late. I, they don't go to bed till, like, 11. I love to stay up late. I got I'm up at 5.30 yesterday because Amos and I were sharing a room and all the lights were on. And, um, but it was kind of, I will say it was kind of nice. It is nice when you get up early. You do feel like you're industrious. I just feel like I'd be exhausted by noon. I was exhausted by noon. So, I know. Yeah. If I could fix one thing, though, I have got to get these children. I want them to leave me alone at 8.30 at night. Well, this, and I don't. This is your chance with the fallback, the time. You're giving, you're giving, being given a gift. So you just go on the old time. No new time for you. <laughs> but eventually, when do you move to the new time? I just stay on it. I'm going to have Amos in the bed at 8 o'clock for the rest of the year. I am committed. Hmm. Interesting. I know what you mean, Kay. I always, that was the hardest thing about having a newborn is you lose your evening because they're up, you know, all over I, the place. We have our nights back. So Winnie did not sleep for the night till she was three and a half. I know. Oh. And I hadn't had an evening in years. She's been yeah. now for two months. So we have slept through the night now for probably two months. 
I'm like a new person. I'm telling you, I am organizing and cleaning and cooking and baking. I finally feel rested, but I, I, there's two things. I have to get her in bed at night and I have to get her potty trained and both of them feel so impossible. I don't know how to do either of them. She'll figure it out. Do one at a time. Yeah. Don't tackle both. Uh, do your pri whatever your priority is. Yeah. Just pick one. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that potty training stuff. I like sleeping better. I figured the potty training out. And I did potty training late with mine, and they all went right through the night. Yeah. Right away. We have some poo-poo stuff going on. We're over. Oh, right. we're and her little body. I, I was just laughing with another mom at daycare. We were laughing. We call them brown bag surprises. So if the kids have an accident they're in their unders, they put them in these little brown lunch bags. They were thirty. Why not throw them away? Yeah, brought, right. Me and this mom were laughing, and I'm like, just throw them away. I will. I will buy new underwear. I never want to. See, yeah, never again. I'm see those. Child, I am done scraping poo out of underwear. Right. And then you don't want to wash it and with all the stuff in the washing machine. I know. I know. Oh. Like, I am not. I, I remember, this is a true story, scrubbing Cooper's clothes, just scrubbing them because it was like, we didn't have a lot of clothes. And like, yeah. then I remember with Sawyer, I would literally cut the onesies off. <laughs> yep. I, did. I would cut them off. So I didn't have to pull the poo over the head, you know? Like, oh, when I was, never did that. That was smart. I it's, could, you could, I could pull them around their shoulders. A mom you know, they stretch. Cut them and just cut them. We used to call them, Joe used to call them up the backers. And it would go up the back. Oh, I was, yeah. So bad. And remember, it was so sour. It yeah. was like sour. It was like a creamy yellow. I remember our gym had daycare. It was the only way I trained for a marathon years ago. It's they the only way I wanted to close it down when you showed up. We said, oh, yeah. <laughs> She's getting her money's worth. I have five yeah. children. I'll see you in a couple hours. I remember this really cute coach. It was like enclosed, but it was like all glass, the daycare area, childcare. And I was talking to this like really cute coach, you know, like, yeah, so I'm running. It's really fun. And they all came up and plastered their big heads up against it and started like, mom, mom's here. And I was like, I have no idea who they are. <laughs> Who's the kids with those? I mean, when I think about, and Kate, you probably are in the same boat, getting them in and out of the car. I really look back and think, how did I get them all? Like, I lined them up on the curb, and we're going to all walk in. Like, just moving around the world was such an effort. So this morning at hockey, because I don't have, we have car seats in the car, like booster seats, but we don't have the, you know, Winnie's three. And right. So I was at hockey this morning, and it's mites. So it's five-year-old and six-year-old kids. So it's a lot of young families. We're, in, we're an older family now. And so there were a lot of moms with a toddler, and then one on the ice and then the baby in the carrier. This is like, it's the, it's, it's my, I felt weird that I didn't have a carrier anymore. So I, I'm gonna feel bad saying this. I felt glad oh, that I didn't have a no. carrier. I've, oh yeah, I think. Enjoy oh. that because this week I looked over in the driver's seat and it was my 15 year old son trundling me around. Oh, he's like driving Miss Daisy. Wait, oh, you're Miss <laughs> Or is he Miss Daisy? He's yeah, you're Daisy. I don't know, but he, he does this great imitation. You know the little handle above here? Like that, that I don't know what it's for, other than for new new drivers' parents to sit there and then he does this imitation of Joe's head going back. Oh, the old shit handle. That's the old shit handle in the Swenson household. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go uh see what my husband has been fine. doing. Well thank thank you for this. I enjoyed it. Yes, and so when are we live this week? I think we are still working it out. We thought about making my page on, on Monday afternoon to mix it up because Tuesday's election night and I feel like that's going to be. How do we do a poll? Can we do a poll? Yeah. Who can okay. set that? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. There was a lady that accused me and us of only going live when Kamala's speaking and that we are trying to take away from her glory and message. I have never laughed so well, hard in my entire life. I pointed out that, that the candidates are trying to take away from our regular time, Very which true. is Tuesday night. They're not respectful. <laughs> yeah. I just remember when we went live during one debate, it, it did, was not super you know well received i just love so I, that somebody comes on to watch us and then bitches that we're on during the debate <laughs> we'll go watch the freaking debate this is not like a requirement this is not a signed reading 
that's like when I'm live and they're like, Kate's live too. Adrian's live now. Like I'm like, make your choice. I make a care. choice. This is it. The rubber's me. met the road. I'm here no matter what. And then we're definitely live on Autism Out Loud's page. Go give that a follow. Anybody watching? Um, at 12 11 on uh wednesdays i like it over there yeah it's know. nice yeah yeah me too so stay tuned stay tuned we're gonna sort that out in the next day or so yeah, uh, yeah just let us week. know oh, carrie yes so is it your page carrie i think so yeah, i don't really okay. care only because we flip-flopped but whatever no, I think it is your page yeah okay it's your page so I'll touch base with you guys and I'll uh, share tomorrow what we decide. So everybody have a great Saturday night. Yes. Bye. Okay. Bye friends. Bye. bye.